Okay guys, I've gotten enough work done on my LS oil pump porting project. I wanted to kind of go over some of the decisions I made. Let me show you what we got going on on this inlet here. So basically I went to the inlet where the pickup tube bolts on, removed all of the casting flash or restriction, I guess you could call it, that you could see inside that opening. But remember, when you work this, don't touch anything outside of where the O-ring seals. Okay, so when you're looking at this thing, this first step right here, that's where your O-ring seals. Don't do anything from that point outward all your work needs to be inward. When you look in this hole, you'll see those two little ridges, looks like ridges. Okay, now here's my thoughts on those. Because I've seen people, SLP and a few other people, they leave those ridges in there. And then you also see pictures online where people completely take them out. Here's my thoughts on that. Did you know that when you bolt your pickup tube to the oil pump, the tube reaches to or beyond those two little ridges? Now keep in mind, when you look at a stock LS oil pump, or like this, Melling's M295 pump, that little ridge that you see now will be way bigger it'll be way taller okay so basically what i did was brought it down where it was flush with the entrance but i didn't need there was no need to completely remove it because the tube sticks in far enough that it can't be a restriction so if you see pumps that that's been completely ground out, that's fine, but it's purely aesthetic. It's not going to improve oil flow. Okay. Got you centered where you can kind of see what I'm going to refer to. So basically you're going to have a ramp. When you look at this entrance, you're going to have a ramped area where it blends into the actual cavity for the pump now when you look at trying to reduce or remove restriction and improve freedom of fluid flow you're going to see that what you're going to do is basically kind of lay that ramp back just a little bit i mean it's not a ton but when you like right, look through there or run your fingers up through the entry, you'll be able to feel what's kind of like a, I don't want to say it's a, a lump or a bump or a ridge, but you'll be able to feel with your finger how far to move that back where you have a smoother transition into the floor of that cavity. And then I also widened it to the outside. And what I mean by outside is over here on this side I widened it and removed some material to make a smoother transition to the cavity then I of course radiused it around the entire circumference of the entrance on the inside and then re I'm not going to say I polished it but I have removed to a, a, a fairly fine finish using scotch bright ball removing all of the texture specifically in the entrance area to the first part of the pump cavity as much as i could reach because you know those little scotch bright balls they don't go down too small because the arbor that holds them is a certain size now if you are a person that owns a dremel i don't personally own a dremel but if you had one and had access to those really small polishing drums, you could do some more polishing in the floors of these pump cavities. So basically what I decided 
was to just radius that opening, uh, remove as much, uh, let's just call it surface texture as I could in that inlet area, and then smooth that ramp and blend it into the floor of that cavity. All right, let me set up the other side that got ported because we've got some really interesting information over there. Okay, guys, wanted to talk about the modifications I made to the outlet side of this pump cavity. Basically, what I looked at was coming from this point in the cavity, coming around this wall, and then blending into a, a smooth transition into this exit okay now again if i was a better videographer i would be able to insert before and after this is what the pump looked like before but all that stuff can be found online and you can look inside your own oil pumps and you'll be able to see basically what i did was i smoothed and made a, a good transition all the way around this wall into this exit specifically in this area sorry I'm getting in getting in your light switch sides in this area right here I made I took out quite a bit of material now I did not go hog wild and hog that thing out like some of the other ones I saw online if we if you look at the theory on porting and port volume like when you're doing cylinder heads funnel porting is never an advantageous event like having a large opening that necks down to a small port doesn't really do anything it's not beneficial so basically I just focused on opening and radiusing all the entrances to this exit port and if you look down on this side of the port on your pump you're going to see it has like a raised ridge or area that can be removed smoothed and radius to slightly enlarge the uh, port or not i would say the cross-sectional opening into that exit when you come out of your oil pump into the engine block okay i want to show you something down inside of there there are pretty severe, pretty thick casting lines, okay? They're hard to reach, and I'm not going to say mine is 100% perfect, but no one online talked about clean, the cleanup of that port after you leave the pump cavity. I exit port from the cavity of the pump all the way to the block is perfectly smooth. I mean, you can see the light bouncing through there. That gives you an indication of how much I've smoothed the walls and removed all uh, casting flash that you can fill with your finger. This thing is definitely going to have less restriction because we're going to make a better volume in the actual pump cavity or body of the pump. We yeah. improved the uh, path from the pump into the block. So, I mean, that's something I was really concerned about. The Melling M295 pump is considered a upgrade of sorts over just the factory, regular, as-delivered LS oil pump. But, all the information I found online, and, and I'm including SLP, Texas Speed, whoever, advertise oil pumps they never mention a word about the cleanup that's required or needed in the area from the pump cavity to the block because if you could see and I, I highly encourage you to take a maybe just a factory pump or if you pick up one of these melling pumps look up in there stick your uh, you can probably your pinky will probably fit Stick your pinky up inside of that port and feel the casting lines and the roughness that I'm referring to. That can't be overlooked. I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble to uh, port an oil pump, you're going to have to point the, port the whole thing 
or else you're not really doing yourself any favors, you know. Um, so there, there's one point that I was really bumfoozled about. Like, why has no one ever talked about this part of the pump that, you know, is probably as important as the other parts that they wanted to port because it's so rough and has such tall casting lines in it that's going to be a huge restriction it could cause um, aeration or cavitation it could do all kinds of different things remove that junk get them polished out I mean most of the work I did was with uh, double cut burrs I did use a little bit of a single cut but you got to be real careful with those because they're pretty aggressive sanding rolls both you know medium grit like 80 grit and then down to 120 grit and then I used a scotch bright ball yeah. and the standard abrasive deluxe porting kits use that use those buff balls you know you may have to take one and what I do is run it up against a grinder wheel while it's running to make it smaller now I don't want you to go out and ruin a brand new buff scotch bright ball I'm saying if you have one from previous working or if you can't order one online that's small enough that you can work down to get into this port it can be done to uh, give that thing I'm not going to say it's a micro polished but that you have greatly reduced the flow restriction of that passage to the block and then again like I said on the other side of this pump it's absolutely ridiculous to um, worry about those two little ridges in the bottom of this opening because the stupid pickup tube negates that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that old saying, work smarter, not harder, really applies in this circumstance because I had it in my head that I was going to just totally remove those because I thought it would help, you know, I was like, oh yeah, if I get this perfectly smooth, I'm going to help the flow of this pump. But then I saw on a different, I don't know, forum or whatever, a picture of a guy who showed his pump that had been uh, sectioned. It was weird. It was like a sectioned oil pump with the uh, pickups tube bolted to it. I was like, wait a minute. That stupid tube reaches past those dumb rings at the bottom, you know. Like, okay, rethinking this. We're going to do this the right way. We're going to try to, you know, increase the flow without doing anything we don't need to do. So right now we're done with the porting process on the pump. I'm going to go and start measuring some washers because I've decided through my vast forum uh, research, I've decided that I'm going to shim at a hundred thousandths because from the best I can tell, because it's absolutely like voodoo, nobody wants to tell you the truth, best I can tell, if you shim this pump a hundred thousandths, you're supposed to gain 10 pounds of oil pressure in the upper RPM range. I did not see anybody claiming that it would make any changes whatsoever to your idle oil pressure, but I think it can add a little bit of pressure to your cruise oil pump uh, pressure and add 10 pounds in the upper RPMs where you can safely rev above 6200 RPMs and not worry about cavitation or oil flow volume. So there is the HFI ported oil pump. I'm glad to be done with it because I got a lot of other projects I need to get done as soon as possible. Um, I hopefully covered everything that you guys might want to know if I left anything out, or if you have any specific questions on uh, how I ported this pump, why I ported it the way I did, or if there's other modifications that you think need to be or could be done to it, let me know. Hit up them comments and we'll work through it together and what you think? see what we think about it. As always, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share as much as you can. I'm fighting against YouTube on these on my revenue so the more likes and shares and all that i can get the better so hit the little bell guys thanks again